Dr. Elishama, um, there's this argument out there about this not too young to yeah. run law, mm -hmm. about the fact that most of these political parties do not have it specifically stated in their constitution, the age limit for the different positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you find a youth leader who's about 50 years, and by definition, the youth is between 21 and 40. Mm -hmm. So how do you think this not too young to run law would work in tandem with the constitution of the political parties? Um, I don't think there should be more, much problem about that. The not, the not too young bill, if you have to look at the age from 35, like, you know, 40, maybe 45 to 50, you can still categorize, you know, people in that group as young, even a little bit after 50 years old, I think so, also to the 55, 56. And just like you said, most political parties should begin to have a specific, you know, age number to say, okay, we are leaving this amount, 20%, 30%, you know, for the youth uh, in our party to be able to have a chance to, to be part of the whole electoral process. Um, I don't think the limitation of that age within that bracket should be a major issue, a major issue, you know, within the party. Mm. It's, it's, it's a vague number. A vague number. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bala, do you agree with her? No, I don't. Because if you look, look at all the political parties, I don't have any, uh, I'm not isolating any particular political party. Look at all the political parties at national, at state, and at local level, they are youth leaders. That's how you know when somebody is saying, they said if you were preaching, you should be a doer of what you preach. Mm -hmm. So whether PDP or whatever party sponsors the bill or an individual from that party, look at that party and look at the opposing party, who are their youth leaders? How old are they? What we need is not what we need is too old to run and not too young to run. <laughs> when me. we talk about political party is saying thirty five percent should be allocated to you. No, political party should say thirty five percent should be allocated to the old. There is a generational shift all over the world. Go to France, go to America, go to Germany, go everywhere. So but you know in Nigeria it is very easy, very, very easy to buy into people's sentiment. If I look at NATO and I see what drives him crazy, what 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 he what resonates with him. I look for something that I will bring as an engagement. And then if you satisfy, when they started this uh, idea of not too young to run, which is one, what I have supported, but I feel that we ought to have seen, at least in our history since 1999 to date, that quite a number of young people have come close to the glass ceiling, but they are having a problem of breaking the glass ceiling because of the age limit. But there is none. I'm telling you all political parties from even local councillorship. When you say you want to run, they will tell you right there and then. So I think that it is more of a lip service than of a determination to see it work. But this glass ceiling, I thought you said, it's never been about the age specification. It's always been about the culture that we have. Right. So I am talking about a couple of problems. That is one. But if the culture is dealt with, then age becomes a factor. Because you, can, you go to other places where you see a young governor, and he's having a worse record. You go to places where you see an old governor, and he's having a better record. Imagine Barack Obama just retired in his life, less than 55 or so. And then the next person in America's history is 73. But what they are looking at as a society is performance. And performance is not judged by age, but by your ability to think. So when people talk about age, they are talking about probably strength, vibrancy, uh, you, know, you know, flexibility and all of that. But if you look at the Nigerian context, to be honest with you, the age is not the issue. But if we mean that we truly want to bring the young people to the front burner, then what are we doing with other extant laws that will make the, the field a level playing ground for them? Like which one? For example, I talked about independent, independent candidacy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> independent candidacy would have afforded a young man from Aouchi, for example, with vision and goals, but he knows that going through that political party will be a problem for him to run. But even when, you, when they introduce independent candidacy, it is still a scam. It's like 419. Because in that law, okay, let me give you an example independent candidacy. Somebody can come out and say he's running for president. We have 60-something political parties. Assuming all of them have their presidential candidate, we're going to have a ballot of 60-something presidential candidate, right? And you're likely going to have 7,000 people interested in becoming president. So the whole perspective is changed. Now, this is my view. You identify a problem from where the reaction is most. When I look at the law, I now, in my, from my own point of view, the major change where the young people need to penetrate is the national and state houses of assembly and then they can make a statement like some of these guys coming out for presidency they'll be able to make a statement by 2023 
there will be a strong comeback yeah, for the youth. But, but with this law, they can in the state houses of assembly first. They can what? They can, pers they can penetrate in the state houses of that's assembly. It, that's it. Moment. I believe that this law may bring to the front burner or even success younger generation of people in state and national assembly. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Senate and House of Assembly, that is where the change in Nigeria is required. Mm -hmm. All right, Honorable Mulu, um, what was the thinking? Was there any consideration? Because the point he made earlier about money politics is very important. Because when you have those who've been in office, they've got the wealth, they've got the resources, but the structure, you, you refer to structure a lot in, in, in politics here. Yeah. So if they were to bring their son, as Jimmy would have considered that that's the case, how does one who is coming, just relying on this bill, on this law, say, well, since... Is allowing me to contest as a president. I'm above 40 or 35. I can vie. And then one who's got, who's been there, his influence of his parents or political godfather or whatsoever. Was there any consideration when taking a look at this bit? Say, look, how do you ensure there's a level playing field so that he doesn't acquire or throw in much more money or use state resources against the person who was just coming in as a result of this law? Correct. Yes, but I just told you earlier that. You, for me, I always tell the young people go out there and amass, uh, uh, acquire social capital that will work social well for capital? you. That will work for, that will work well for you. Let me tell you, we have a state. One of the states uh, today, their speaker used to be a wheelbarrow pusher. Uh, you know, I, I I wouldn't want to mention the states on on air. You know, we we've had records, successive records of people that didn't have didn't come from. Privileged background, and they did so not to get speak. any. And, and there was not, no, no, them. and there was Jesus none, Godfather. and there was none. And uh, take for instance, what position? Uh, wait, wait, take for instance. I, I represent to the soul of federal constituency. I, I, I make bold to say that I don't have any godfather. Anyone can come out and say, and I got to the house at the age of 36. I had no godfather, and that was coming from Lagos. I'm an able person, you know. So it, I think the most important thing here is that. We appreciate the fact that Mr. President has passed this bill into law. The dynamics will play out. It is politics. People, okay. people that are interested will join. Like I always tell people, get involved first. Begin to, you know, from the outside, most times you, 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 you hear so many, so but, many <coughs> Sorry views. to jump in. Mm. I get your point, you know, mm. but you know as well, mm. and correct me if I'm wrong, mm. that the dynamics will be completely different if you say you want to contest a second term. Mm. Because this is your first time in the office. In yes, house. yes. So, but you know that that will be different. So many things will change. Absolutely. So did you take into consideration that, look, the chances of people throwing money in politics, it happens here, we know that. There's no play, point playing an ostrich. It does. So what was the consideration to ensure that there's a level playing field? Like I, I keep telling you, when you say level playing field, someone throws in money, you don't have the money. There's nothing you're going to do. You're not going to rob the bank to throw in your own money. So all you need to do... Voice on helpless all you need to... It's, it's, Where did you not, get the money? it's not necessarily helpless. Because there's no way you're going to stop someone that wants to throw in money in politics from throwing in money. I'm just being realistic. Okay. But then, in between the both of you, you're throwing so much money. We've seen that happen in most climes where some people will throw in so much money. The, the electorate will begin to suspect you. You intend to buy us. You want to buy our votes. You want to get in them. I think the Nigeria electorate are becoming more aware. Yeah, but, but the point he made is about the intentment of the law not being defeated such that one doesn't wield unnecessary undue advantage to the other because you've been in position to use state funds against the other. Daniel has mentioned some issues that I feel are very basic for us to look into, especially the independent candidacy. Also, that was part of what I proposed, you know, but for some reasons. Uh, politics will always... Uh, play out. Dr. Shama, is this an issue for you? Uh, it, the money politics is an issue, a very big issue, and that's the, great, the greatest problem we have in Nigeria right Absolutely. now. For the youth and for anybody that really has the sincerity of wanting to serve, you know, wanting to serve with sacrifice, wanting to serve with the fear of God, and wanting to really serve the people. But I agree with him. If you develop social capital and the people have seen you working in the public service, and when we are talking about public service, a lot of people are confused. They think it's only the people inside all those, like uh, the, the cines, the house of assembly, all of those places. No. A lot of people have been working in public service in different you know levels like taking care of uh, the needy using their own personal funds like the NGOs you know taking care of the community getting involved in the affairs of the nation you know 
in a social way they have invested their life because those people go with passion serious passion without having any ambition to re even go into the government